I don't know how, I don't know how, why it used to announce when recording was happening and now it, it doesn't. I have to figure that out. There must be some setting. Anyway, welcome to today's Lang Team Triage meeting. Oh, well, let me share. Keep us somewhat synchronized. Um, if I can find it, there we go. Okay. Uh, so, Go down the list. Um, I again, this will hopefully start changing, but I haven't had time to do any pre work on the agenda. So people should feel free to throw things in that need updates. Um, are there comments or updates on any of the active projects? Uh, const evaluation, async foundations, macro. I saw there was some posts in the macro repetition counts, but I think we also may have lost our liaison. Is that correct? I feel like I'll have to ping Lokathor about that. I believe I think... they had ran short on time uh, and did not have the bandwidth con to continue shepherding that yet, or liaising that rather. I think they may have also had a conflict with the Tuesday time. Okay. Well, let me put that on my Lang team follow-up list. Um, just to figure out what's going on with that project effort. Const generics, I think we're moving along more or less with the uh, with the like minimum const generics and so forth. All right. Uh, Stabilizing one dot fifty one now, I think. So here's something. We need to schedule a meeting relating to RFC 2229, which is the closure capture, more precise closure capture. Um, and I filed a meeting request over here. Uh, should we do that this week or maybe next week? Because I don't have much, haven't had much time to prepare. Um, any objections? Okay, let's do that next week. Um, so mm, I'll note it here. Um, I can go ahead and update the calendar invite for next week. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. And leave a note on the issue too, if you don't mind. Um, well, I can do that real fast. Uh, oh, I'm not logged in. Okay, whatever. Yeah, if you can do that, that'd be great. Will do. All right. Um, cool. Then let's move on. So we got nominated RFCs. Is this what you were just talking about, Josh? Uh, yes. Try trait. So I did mark this as nominated. I think it's worth discussing, but I think we should very, very briefly just observe the overview of it in this meeting and then defer any detailed discussion to tomorrow's design meeting. OK. Uh, Scott, do you want to give the 60-second version? Sure. This is um, trying to address a bunch of the feedback from the tracking issue, like your good experience report from way too long ago. Um, the core differences between this one and the last one, this introduces a not GATS, but similar in intent type that can be used to keep the optionness or resultness of something through a question mark. Uh, the default question mark, DSugar could not use that one for compatibility reasons, but it could be used inside a tri block if we chose to go that direction for tri blocks. And it's also valuable to the library where unstable methods like iterator try find would like to be able to use it, as well as a couple other things like there was a PR recently for. Uh, try map on arrays that would want that behavior as well. 
It also is a bit of a hybrid between your two uh, essentialist and reductionist options, Nico, where the OK type is an associated type, but it uses a separate trait for uh, constructing in a throw sort of situation so that it's up to the type to define what uh, errors can be converted into a particular try type. You say that the question mark desugaring can't be changed. Is that something we could address in an addition potentially? Have you thought about that? Uh, yes, the, the trouble is that anything is that I consider it quite common for it to rely on the context in quite a lot of existing code. Um, we could talk about moving to a different form uh, where one would have to opt into the error conversion, but I don't know that there'd be a lot of appetite for needing them um, like map air into or something on every place that you're using air conversion. That does sound uh, unappealing <laughs> uh, and like something that would ha we'd want to loop in with the air handling working group at minimum, though I think it's probably just a non-starter. Um, I think it's also not too bad because the way, to, one way that we could define to opt into the, no, it doesn't do any conversion is just you put a try block in the method. Mm. And then that would be your opt in for, oh, I want the no conversion, please just use the type of the resultness or optionness of whatever I question marked to decide what's going to come out. I guess we'll have, so I see, Josh, you mentioned design meeting. I'm debating how deep, like I haven't read the RFC and it probably would be a better conversation if I had. Uh, that may be true for others in this meeting. That's uh, part of why I thought it would be valuable to do the brief overview in this meeting and then a design meeting tomorrow with the hopes that in between there, people may have an opportunity to take a look over the RFC. It's relatively straightforward as an RFC, but yes, the discussion will go better if people have had a chance to read it. Would we want to do that tomorrow or uh, in? I'd prefer like, a week personally. We just scheduled something for next week. We could do the week after. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. um, well, I put it on next tomorrow's agenda earlier this week. So if we're going to bump oh. it by a week, I would prefer that we uh, put this next week. I didn't notice that. We got to, all right. You and I are going to circle up and decide a new design meeting scheduling plan starting this week. But, uh, uh, it's fine though. Uh, I am okay doing it tomorrow, but yeah, it doesn't give a lot of time to read. Um, I mean, I guess we'll have more. It's fine. If everyone present wants to do it tomorrow, then I'll just make do. I just got a lot of stuff going on right like today. I think it will not be the end of the world if you don't have the bandwidth to read more than the summary of the RFC by tomorrow. I think it'll help to have read it, but uh, it's a fairly straightforward proposal and I think we can go through it in the meeting as well. Scott, you're available tomorrow? Yeah, I'm available. I mean, the other point is it could potentially... Uh... <laughs> could wait two weeks, I suppose. What, when was this, op this was opened relatively recently? Yeah, oh. Sunday. Okay. Part of the reason that I thought it was worthwhile to go ahead and get that uh, discussed was that I'm hoping that if this proposal is reasonable, that we might be able to get this handled, roughly speaking, by the edition. It's not edition tied, I, I don't think, and I'm hoping that doesn't change, but on the off chance there is any in edition interaction, it would be nice to be able to handle that in a timely fashion. It's been open for far too long. It has been open for far too long. All right, let's do the, let's do the meeting tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, Felix, don't feel obliged to do the reading. 
and if you can't attend, that's also okay. I can catch you up, I guess. I don't think we'll make any decisions anyway, right? It's kind of a dig into the RFC and understand it meeting. Um, and we will, but no, we don't make decisions in meetings, so. <laughs> um, let's do that. All right, moving on. So, uh, why is this still nominated? <laughs> Um, are there any final comments before I go to nominated PRs and issues? Okay. So we got Rust 54883. Um, does anyone know what's the status here? This is the uh, OR patterns. It looks like everything is implemented and we're basically ready to stabilize. Is that correct? I'm looking at this comment from Mark I am um, at the end of the issue. By the way, I'm trying not to shift the, the view and just keep it on the HackMD um, so I can take more minutes and things. Uh, but it seems like we've resolved the PAT 2018-2021 behavior. Do we have the necessary lints we need for the addition switch? No. Well, I don't know. I doubt it. But um, that is part of the new addition, I guess. That's right? true. We could stabilize the PAT 2018 and PAT 2021 without it. I think, uh, right, if we stabilize this, it would basically everything works. The only thing that's surprising is that the pattern uh, defaults to PAT 2018, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess on my side, at least, um, it feels like before moving to FCP, it would be good to have a stabilization report written up, which I am unable to find quickly. I agree. Um, I am, I'm trying to figure out if we're ready to do, yeah, okay. So we need a stabilization report. The main thing I'm wondering about is do we want to would we want to stabilize before we've done the addition work or would we want to wait to make sure that we're going to get that work done or whatever? Um, it's kind of incurring yeah. a certain amount of obligation maybe. But. The expectation being some sort of transitionary, uh, transitional lint that um, would help you migrate from the 2018 to the 2021 behavior? Yes. I guess that's the only thing that's really missing. Well, Given and, how little breakage we observed, I mean, we observed enough in Crater that we did not want to just migrate directly and say pattern has this behavior in all editions, but we did not observe so much that this seems like it is worth taking a disproportionate amount of time implementing a lint to very carefully scan macro tokens and follow sets and similar and try to figure out if you can be migrated over. If somebody wanted to unconditionally change PAT to PAT 2018 when moving to the new edition, that would be potentially workable, but that actually seems uh, counterproductive given that in 99% of cases, you could just move to PAT and that is the preferable alternative. So I actually um, think I'm wondering if we actually need further addition work here or if the lowest friction option for all involved would just be PAT 2018 exists if you want to use it. Most of the time you can just move to PAT and it will co compile and work. I think because of the interaction with macros, at least my concern would be that if we don't give a lint, not necessarily migrating, but telling you that you have a problem, it is really easy to migrate to 2021 and break, you know, potentially all of your users or a good chunk of them who are using the sort of broken behavior, right? I see. Your concern is that an, a crate moves over and then there is no breakage in that crate because no test breaks, but it breaks in some dependency and people don't realize until it is changed in a micro revision. Right, yeah. Um, but I, I also agree that I, I don't think I would want to, I guess I would presume, 
potentially want to block on someone like Petroshenkov saying that this lint is feasible to implement at all. But if like there is loose idea that it is feasible, then I, I don't think it's necessary for stabilization. That was my precise concern was I imagine it, there's a big difference between feasible and straightforward and figuring out how successfully to determine if this is a, an issue seems non-trivial. Um, I, hmm, does anyone, yeah, I feel like I, I would like a lint personally. I think that's in our general yeah. migration, like handbook, whether or not it affects a lot of people, but I'm not sure how hard it is. I do agree that just migrating everyone to 2018 is counterproductive and definitely not what we want. Um, I assume uh, likewise, just warning on every occurrence of pet is likewise a like non-starter. Like there's some level of intelligence we need to put in here for this to be. Uh, right, but I think it may be as simple as looking at the follow sets. Like, well, I think what I had thought about the last time we did this was thinking that we can probably have some simple heuristics that cover a lot of cases and we needed someone who wanted, was willing to do some experimenting. Um, however, I didn't do any of that experimenting. Uh, I do think we compute the follow sets already in order to, because we make errors, right, for if they're not correct. So we may have all the data we need and just need to inspect it. It probably takes a little bit of time to dig into it. Um, we I'm, com I'm comfortable stabilizing regardless, but I do, yeah, would like to get, make sure we don't overlook this. I feel like there's probably two common patterns for how people actually make their macros work like this, right? The people who have a comma question mark in the new way or who use the move the comma outside the parent trick to call the other arm of the macro. And if we handled those two, then that would probably get pretty much everyone. I don't know. It seems a little too in the weeds to dig into right here. But the main thing is, can we find someone? Is there someone who will do this? And how can we figure that out? But I will, I propose that we, we message to Mark IM to ask them to do a stabilization report. And uh, maybe I'll ping, actually, they might want to do the migration one too. I don't know. We can ask them how they feel about it. Um, I will, I can take that. And a largely unimportant thing, if there's any chance that we slip the addition to 2022, it would be awkward to be stuck with Pat 2021. Yeah, I was kind of assuming we were not gonna, that's a good point. I think we should not stabilize Pat 2021 until that plan is in place. Uh, That's a fair point. Stabilizing it along with the addition seems reasonable. Do we have an official statement of yes, there is going to be a 2021 edition? No. No, uh, it's an active area of work. Yeah. There's active, um, there, are, there are PRs for the compiler to add the necessary addition machinery. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, I, I have high confidence that we're going to have another edition very soon. Um, I just mean that maybe we shouldn't stabilize Pat 2021 until there's a RFC saying, yes, there is a 2021 edition or something like that. Yeah, let's let's sure. defer that. Yeah, good call. Is, yeah, is the implication on. here that we might stabilize Pat 2018 without having a Pat 2021 stabilized? Or, you, or is it implicit that we would not stabilize Pat 2018 either because until until we figure out the uh that was not implicit, but that probably makes sense. Yeah, I can imagine hypothetically someone saying, oh well, this change is gonna happen at some point, then I'll port my code over to Pat 2018 now, but that's a pretty niche right, scenario. Right. Yeah. Um okay. I'm just putting a note to myself. 
to send that message. And, okay. and to be clear, no one should port their code over to Pat 2018 because presumably they would also just say on, like they would not want to bump their major version of or minor version of Rust dependency just for the sake of. Oh, that's true. Declaring yeah, that they're know. going to continue using 2018 code. I don't think that's a given, but yeah. Um, they might want other um, reasons. They might have other reasons to go to the new edition or whatever. Um, but, it has to be, but you still need to have that. OK, anyway, don't need to get into the weeds about this. OK, so the next one, support pub on macro rules. Um, oh, hi, Ryan. Uh, so last time we were talking about wanting someone to do some follow-up work here. Um, and Josh and I were reaching out, but and trying to find people. Um, I think that continues. Petroshink, I'm going to move from that. Petroshinkov uh, pinged about this, right? I want to do this first. 79078. Did anyone follow up? I guess the main thing was we were blocked on or Taylor's had left a comment that about ordering and Petroshinkov seemed to did anyone follow, like, why are they working to fix that, or what's the plan? I am trying um, to find the thread on Zulip now, but I think that they had said that they it would be possible to uh, sort of re-add the restriction that we were concerned about. And um, yeah, so I, th I think that's the next step. So we're waiting for them to do it. Yeah, sure. I believe that Petra Chinkov is working on that. They did an updated push. I'm not sure if that change uh, implemented that yet or if there's some further work required. Okay. Should we confirm that with a comment? Somebody volunteer to leave a comment with that update. I can do that. Thank you. All right. Next one. Um, we got never the never pattern or the never type. Never. Never dereference, never again. Um, uh, yeah, I did look at this. Um, I haven't implemented a fix for it yet, but the, the, the interesting thing I did discover is that um, uh, while let underscore equals blah, 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 um, doesn't do unsafe checking, um, let underscore colon type equals blah, 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 does do unsafe checking, which was shocking to Ralph and Adam, I argue a little upset. Um, <laughs> So anyway, there's there's some hint. This is I suspect a compiler bug, and there's the interesting thing to me is that someone responded that that observation by saying, "Oh, let's bring make these things consistent." And the way that the way they made it consistent was by making type type ascription not uh, cause this to happen, as in you know it would still fail to on safety check even when you had the type ascription. But Ralph rightly said we haven't decided if that's the right direction here. Anyway, I'm I'm still trying to figure out the actual fix to. Because I assume we're gonna. Uh, the plan still, I believe, is to move forward with um, uh, doing unsafety checking on the expression. Uh, there is one thing that came up pretty recently. Someone asked, someone gave a, a, a correlated example um, of doing a deref of an uninitialized val. Uh, what was it? A deref of an uninitialized reference, and then likewise was the case where it was, you know, being bound to a let underscore and thus and that also was accepted by the compiler and for some reason in my head this is not as bad but i'd be curious to hear other people's opinions i probably should link to the actual example or something rather than just describe it 
Yeah, I was going to say what I don't understand the example. It's it's yeah. Let me let me really. I'll, I'll just so just to, just to hold on this let underscore colon t thing. I imagine that's because we. It's like a it's, art, uh, artifact of the fact that we have to assert the type of the expression. Uh, yeah, yeah. For we, mirror uh, borrow we, checking. We eject a, a type description statement, and that's treated as a use, and ends up causing the uh, the checking to then emit the that's you know an unsubstantiated check. This is this is the example that I'm saying is also accepted right today. Um, oh, did someone just write it in? I think someone actually already just inlined it. Yeah, someone else um, yep. transcribed it. So. The point is, this is sort of analogous, depending on your point of view, in terms of whether it should be also a bug or not. Um, that that this is that this doesn't cause the borrow checker or the initialization checker to complain. Um, but like I said, for some reason, my head isn't as bothered by this, probably because I don't know. I'm willing to treat this more of as, as a semantic analysis rather than a uh, syntactic one, and I appreciate on safety checking as being more syntactical. I think I agree with you. I guess it's also true that this, does that compile? Uh, and I guess yes, but I don't know. I don't know, that might not. Oh, that's scary, because <laughs> then you could make the first type an ampersand underscore. It never runs. It does compile. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, the, I think the heart of this ends up being that we never generate mirror for the dereferencing. For whatever reason, I haven't figured it out yet, but we, it seems like we, at least the, the dump mirror mm -hmm. doesn't include the dereferencing operation in, in these cases. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's not wrong. Like, Okay, but if uh, our checks are based on analyzing the mirror, then there's a problem then. Well, I mean, for these cases, I don't think it's wrong. I am not, I, I actually don't think that checking unsafe on mirror is correct. And I have thought that for a right. while. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> I am a bit reluctant to suggest you rewrite the unsafe check completely. Uh, however, <laughs> I do think that's the correct fix. <laughs> I think it should be done on hair. Um, but that kind of informs my intuition also of like why I think, I just think of unsafe as a static sort of right. simple uh, syntactic check. And this is this, the like borrow check is very flow sensitive and all about actual uses and. and uh -uh. My, my current plan is to try to generate this mirror and then discard it, like generate the mirror, do an unsafe check on it and then discard it as a first like <sighs> yeah. cut, this, um, this which is really want, crappy. Yeah. Um, this but, is, this is how we fix the dead code thing too, right? If I recall, we had the same problem around other kinds of dead code. When we first released the thing, mm -hmm. it was like ignoring unsafe in dead code. Yeah. And we kind of fixed yeah. it by running it before we do dead code stripping, which I always thought was the wrong fix. Um, and now we're paying for that, I guess. Yeah, but there was, uh, there was something about like forcing us to look at the discriminants of various things as well in matches, as I recall. Yep, yep. Yep, we have fake read for let and stuff like that. We have various fake reads that we admit to do that to do that kind of thing. I believe, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like we're piling we hacks on hacks on hacks to keep this because it's just the wrong place to do it. Uh, but I the only reason we even moved it to mirror is because we wanted it's something to do with uh, like the hidden DREFs around packed structs, if I recall. Um, mm. We wanted to make the accessing a field oh, it's getting a little vague i'm not sure why mirror makes this easier but that was that is my memory of the reason was had to do with because we had to know what kind of thing we were dealing with i guess right i don't know why yeah now i don't know why mirror makes it easier either but yeah um, we had to know but yeah exactly it's not like we needed i don't know i'm not sure why i'm not sure it made sense <laughs> but even anyway. so we could we could still do unsafety checking on the ast and then more unsafety checking in the mirror if it really came to that like probably the right thing is for you to do a targeted fix but maybe uh, there are some people who've been looking who have been looking for uh mentored work and maybe i should try to engage one of them um, okay that might be the right approach 
I don't know how we track this kind of thing. We kind of don't. I guess anyway, it sounds like though everyone issues, here is, but... is 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 on board with the idea that these extra these other bullets, these other variants are in fact okay and should not be rejected by the compiler. Does that sound right? It meets my intuition. But... Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it meets my intuition, but I like the statement you made earlier that um, initialization checking is already flow sensitive and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, there's all kinds this of a complicated form of flow sensitivity. Then I, I'm fine uh, with it. As another example, that's consistent with this. If you say, let uh, mute x equals 22, let y equals ampersand x. Uh, no, no, let y equals, yeah, let's say ampersand mute x, let underscore equals x, drop y or something. I think this also compiles, even though x is borrowed here because we don't consider this an access. So yeah. it's just sort of the whole family of things that we accept and I, that are all based on the notion of, of what an access is. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I'm still somewhat unhappy with this like notion of let underscore being different from let underscore x or whatever to this extent, but it seems at least consistent. Right. I feel like that's an orthogonal. We could change what yeah. let underscore means and it would affect all of these examples in the same way. But right. Yeah. Uh, these I, examples, it, it seems, yeah, you, like one can look at this and says it's truly, it seems totally useless. It's, it's more that it's meant to be consistent with the use of underscore in more complicated patterns where you really don't want to have yeah. a read of something in a yep. spot. Yes, exactly. If you move half of a tuple or something, if you don't have yeah. underscore, then underscore has to mean, anyway. All right, uh, we can debate whether this was the right semantics or not, but I think it's consistent. That's the main thing we're going for right now. Um, unsafe checking skips pointer dereferences and unused places. That's the same thing or? Yeah, this ends up being yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Qualified paths and struct construction. So sorry, just to finalize this one, do we want, are we saying that we have like a lang decision that this is a bug and it's over to the compiler team to decide the appropriate short-term and long-term fix for that? Is that our? That was my interpretation at least, but okay, I, cool. you know, having failed to produce a fix, but that's still, still my intuition here. Okay, let's just write that out. Consensus from meeting. <laughs> This is a bug. Um, we expect unsafe checking to be syntactically scoped. Is that lexically scoped, I guess, is the right? I think, synta I think syntactic based versus yeah. semantic based is a common. Yeah. Anyway, uh, semantic, like syntactic analysis versus semantic analysis is the usual thing, right? Anyway. Right. Whatever. Compiler team can decide the appropriate remedy. Nico has opinions. <laughs> But the, uh, and, and the importantly, the other bullets though are not, are are not bugs. Yes, um, the borrow checker or examples, checking, yeah, right? Yeah. Initialization and borrow checking, uh, however, are not bugs. Um, Sounds like it might also be good to have some easy issues for tests needed for some of these. I don't uh, know if we have tests for things like that initialization. Uh, we, no, I don't know. We do have <laughs> some tests for sure. We have tests of the borrow checking and stuff like that yeah. because it's the NLL one. I bet we do, but, but yeah, I don't know if we specifically have the initialization one. I, I bet not but do what we usually do and add it and then <laughs> At some point, I would love, uh, I just love to have, you know, some way to detect these, answer that kind of question. But I for mean, the time being, I have no idea how one answers it, except by adding a new test and saying, well, maybe we have two now. <laughs> well, there's the approach of, there's the approach of actually changing the compiler behavior and then running the test suite and seeing if you actually can see the failure, right? That's the other yeah. way to detect if, it. Um, if you can get it to boost hard. Track, but yes, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, okay. That sounds like a lot more work than adding a second test. <laughs> <laughs> only because the only reason why it might be hard is because the compiler might not bootstrap itself if you make this change, I, I think. I don't think it's hard to make this the, the change to treat underscores as uses. Um, anyway. OK, so allow qualified paths in struct construction. Didn't we? What happened here? I think we just said we like this or something. Uh, we talked about this for sure. 
I think someone was going to look at whether it was type relative or not, and I think we concluded that it was, and that the only new thing was the uh, ability yeah. to say as whatever. But I think we also maybe Nico, were you going to like actually figure out if that's actually true, and or I think we were going to uh, ask someone to do that. I have no memory. I mean, I do remember this, but I don't remember what I volunteered for. Um, uh, this is where, where we clearly have more recent minutes than this. What's up with that? Uh, I guess I didn't push them. Um, I don't remember. Let's just, I do remember the thing about the only real new thing here was, I'll have to go find the minutes from last time. We did some digging and I'm pretty sure the only new thing indeed was the fact that you can now use the fully qualified syntax that before you could do it, but only with the shorthand. Uh, and that I think made everyone feel fine about it. Um, what's probably missing, I seem to recall verifying that on play, but what's missing is nobody did like an RFC bot FCP merge or something. Yeah, I think we were also going to ask that someone involved with a pull request or whatever, um, like actually writes up a comment of exactly the new behavior being allowed yeah. before we do the FCP merge. That sounds right. I can uh, ask for that if that would be helpful. Yes, that would be helpful. Um, sort of a mini stabilization report, essentially. It's not exactly stabilization, but um, okay. Uh, mark to leave. Mark to make this request. All right, make const error a future incompatible lint. Side note, it's kind of a helpful like markdown rendering bug that <laughs> this turns into H1 for some weird reason uh, when I put an extra dash in here. But um, did we discuss this? It's nominated. It's. I think I think this is from the general family of uh, promote less and uh, move towards more explicit promotion that Ralph is uh, working towards. Seems reasonable. I think it's not related to that, although I could be wrong. I think it's it's sort of different aspect of Constable, um, at least my understanding. It says it's the first step for 71800, make const error a future incompatibility lint and eventually a hard error. There was an RFC. Can somebody dig into this and, or like, rec I don't know. I feel like I would like to have this, not discover this context live in the meeting and have someone do it, not live. Um, I, I can I can take that on. Okay. What do you want to dig into Nico? I want to know, you know how does this relate to all the the like promotion changes that are in flight okay. and is this like an implementation step of something we've already approved or is this a new thing I don't fully understand. Okay. Um, but it seems like something we're going to do eventually. <laughs> it's my impression. Uh given that it's Ralph and it's has to do with the, the general area that it has to do with. But So Mark to prepare a summary I, uh, of how this fits into promotion and other in-flight changes. Um, I guess post on PR, we will revisit next week. Uh, there is this, I'm just looking, there is RFC 3027 infallible promotion, which we're probably ready to FCP bot merge, right? In fact, it's already been merged. OK. Just nobody ever did the actual work to merge it. That I will put on my list. Um, so yeah.
Okie dokie. Avoid promoting division, modulo, and indexing operations that could fail. 80579, damn it. So I just, I just skimmed this one. It's worth noting. It fixes one of the big problems with the previous um, PR that Ralph had posted. Uh, okay. So it fixes one of the problems that 80394 was trying to address? It fixes one of the problems that 80394 would, would introduce if we were to land it. The problem of a, oh, a problem of okay. 80394 is that if you land that, it treats uh, a runtime, a, a seemingly runtime expression that has a division by zero in it as a something that's going to cause the future incompatibility warning to fire because it gets promoted and then it and then at evaluation time at compile time it has a division by zero. This fixes that by no longer doing division, no longer promoting division because it's something that can't in general always um, evaluate. I see. Um, I don't know if it's the right architecture, but that's not my decision. This definitely fits into 3027. Do we have any sense of, okay, I'm skimming now. I see that there was a crater run with some number of regressions. It looks like not a huge number. Um, and all of the regressions to be clear are, uh, as, as far as I understand, removed from things that PR actually regresses because okay. they all backed out the float part of it and yes. array indexing is statically decidable, so it's also backed out of actually being changed. Oh, is the title misleading then at this point? Uh, no, because indexing operations into like slices, I think, are not backed out, but we don't see oh, oh, that right. in practice. Of course, of course, of course, yes. Yes, yeah, so it's specifically array indexing, and not slice indexing, I guess, or yep. something. Well, that was yeah. never promotable, I guess. So, well, I think it might have been if it was in like a static const context, but I'm not sure. Um, in any case, so greater no aggressions. Yes. So it seems like we should land it. <laughs> I think this is just kind of part of the RFC that we've already approved. I think, right? Like, I don't think we need to make an FCP. We just a meeting consensus suffices. Uh, does anyone disagree? All right. Uh, let's post a comment. Okay. Who wants to post a comment? I'll do it. Relax ADT unsizing requirements, 80726. Changes the unsizing rules for structs. How does it do it? So this is an insta-stable change. Um, which hmm. I see. It looks like the premise is that we already allow you to have a unsized field as the, uh, um, and what we're not allowing and now would with this change would be if the last field 
is unsized because of a generic parameter that in turn makes one of its fields unsized. Seems so, like the sort of the last field is coercible. Perhaps. I think we should request a better write up before we make any decision. <laughs> it doesn't really say what it's doing very well. Or what's motivating the change exactly. Right. The motivation may just be as simple as it sounded funny, but that would be OK. Or like, like he said in the comment, I feel the current state is fairly unintuitive. I suspect the motivation is kind of, the, it didn't seem as elegant as it could, but that it would be good to know if there's more. Right. Um, Orthogonality may be a reasonable enough reason, but clarity would be helpful. They can write a comment to that effect. Great. I have a side question. Does anyone has anyone been close enough to the reference writing and so on to know whether like this would affect the Rust reference as it stands today? I think the answer is maybe. <laughs> uh, it would be nice if it would be nice if we got to the point where we documented these sorts of changes by updating the reference. But anyway, OK. Sounds good, Josh. I think with that, we're at the end of our agenda. Any final points anyone wants to bring up? Uh, just to review, we are having two upcoming design meetings, tri trait tomorrow and a week from tomorrow, number 73. Sound good. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.